Well, despite a sea of uncertainty, investors have made a decision this week to jump back into stocks. We're seeing it again this morning in North American trading with the TSX up another 1.5% and the Dow and S&P stronger showing so far on this Tuesday morning. Let's get some more insight on what's going on. Jack Manley is global market strategist at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Jack, it's always nice to see you. And it does feel like different sentiment than the last time we spoke. What's your best guess on how this mood or why this mood has been changing? You know, John, I've, uh, I've stopped trying to figure out okay. why markets respond the way that they respond to a whole lack of, of news, frankly. I don't think anything has materially changed since the last time we spoke just a couple of weeks ago. But maybe these are animal spirits out there trying to drive markets higher, force some sort of rally. Frankly, John, I am an optimist. I've always been an optimist. I am a long-term bull. I think you have to be as an investor. But I think what we're seeing right now is a whole lot of noise. And until we get some clarity on what the terminal Fed funds rate is going to be, it's going to be really, really hard to see a meaningful rally to the upside in equities. Let's let's. Let's just go through some of those numbers then. Um, we'll start with the U.S. We're going to talk a lot about this in Canada t today because, you know, we're, we're getting awfully close to the next interest rate decision in this country, expecting a 50 basis point increase. We've already seen um, three percentage points worth of increases by the Bank of Canada. Actually, today, Scotiabank sees uh, the terminal rate in Canada getting to 4.25 percent. And then for the U.S. story, which obviously the world is watching what the U.S. does and what the Fed does, uh, seems pretty baked in that we'll see another 75 basis point hike. Um, so talk to us a little bit more about when we might know, if, if we will know uh, in this calendar year, whether or not we're getting closer to the end of rate hikes. It's going to be hard to say on that front. You know, one of the things that I think we can sort of take solace in, and it's not particularly encouraging, but it's good enough, is that the, the, the upside surprise on a U.S. CPI last week wasn't as bad as it could have been, right? And I think that may be one of the reasons why equity markets actually rallied uh, after that number came out. It meant that that 75 basis point hike, John, that you mentioned that we're expecting in November is basically locked in. There isn't a whole lot of risk to say a 100 basis point hike happening in that month. Our base case is for another 50 basis points uh, in December of this year, meaning that the U.S. overnight rate ends between four and a quarter and four and a half, which would be just a few basis points higher than what you are seeing uh, in, in Canada. Beyond that, though, I would anticipate and markets seem to anticipate that we get a pause from the Fed. Rates are held more or less where they are. The economy is allowed to digest what's gone on with interest rates. But the Fed itself has told us it's planning on hiking at least 25 basis points more. Frankly, I don't believe it. I think they'll be able to ease off. But I'm hoping that by the end of this year, by that December move, we have a lot more clarity on what that terminal rate actually is. OK, that's helpful context. And you mentioned the inflation. We're getting ready for some more inflation data in this country this week. But, but last <laughs> week, the mood of the market to see an initial sell-off and then a rip-roaring bounce back, you know, it's like, Sports teams, right? There's a lot of psychology and sentiment, you know, and teams get hot. And it felt like the market was feeding into that. Now, um, the other thing, we, there was this, you know, big survey. Bank of America does that fund manager survey. And there seems to be a view from some professionals that we could ultimately see the bottom for stocks by early next year. Uh, which would set the stage for the rally. I was talking to a strategist earlier this hour, though, about what should we expect if we're living in an environment as investors where rates stay at a certain level, right? You talked about cooling down, but I think even in some of those survey findings, there's a belief of a so-called Fed pivot. And we've already seen investors burned by the idea of a pivot. So maybe if we sort of scratch out that term and just say, well, central banks want to keep a lid on inflation, so they're not going to reduce interest rates anytime soon, we'll have to kind of get used to these higher levels. What does that mean for investors, do you think, kind of looking through next year? So I think, John, you know, first of all, we have learned time and time again that investors and markets just hate uncertainty. And I think the fact that we're having this conversation right now that we're trying to figure out on this show where the Fed funds rate is going by the end of this year is an indication there's a whole lot of uncertainty around, in particular, uh, the direction of interest rates. Mm. So when we think about where rates land, I don't think it really matters a whole lot if we get to four and a quarter or four and a half or four and three quarters, whatever that may be. It's just that we get there. 
and then we know where we are and we no longer have to move higher. We dispel some of that uncertainty. We have certainty on where rates are actually going to be. Because once that happens, all of a sudden, market participants are able to accurately price assets. They can figure out what the appropriate discount rate is to apply to future earnings growth. And all of a sudden, I think, frankly, we could be back off to the races. Now, a little bit higher level, John, how does this really impact markets? Well, I think that the era of free money is behind us. Frankly, I hope the era of free money is behind us. And if that's the case, you got to throw out this idea of growth at any price. But you don't throw out growth altogether. Instead, you're looking at this idea of growth at a reasonable price, which means looking towards higher quality growth names rather than any growth name out there. And I think by doing so, you can generate some pretty healthy portfolio returns throughout whatever this recovery period may look like. Well, I, I mentioned we got Netflix reporting later today, and it'll be interesting to see what the sentiment is there, right? Because the stock has gone down so much, but some would still say, well, look at the valuation. And so we'll watch to see what happens through earnings season. And then we've got the midterm election. So we got a lot on our plate for these last few months. Um, in terms of market ideas, beyond that idea of thinking for the long term, cyclical stocks, at least some names within that group, you'll be watching. How come? So cyclicality in general makes sense right now. I think if we're looking at valuation story, if we're looking at the income story, if we're looking at the operating leverage story, uh, you can point to sectors like industrials, materials, financials, energy uh, as being broadly attractive. But I think there are some specific trends here to pay attention to. Now, I am not a long-term energy bull. I've never been a long-term energy bull, but we are dealing with a pretty serious supply side crunch at the moment from an energy perspective, whether it's OPEC pluses, decision to cut production quotas, the ongoing war in Ukraine, uh, U.S. Domestic, uh, domestic production capability. And we see very clearly that energy names are not particularly interested in expending capital on new investments. They'd much rather take that capital and return it to shareholders through dividends or buybacks. So energy, I think, makes sense right now, even though I'm not a long-term believer. The other sector I'm a big fan of, John, and I've talked about it before, I will talk about it again, is financials. And right now, we are looking at large, high-quality, multinational, mega-cap banks being priced as if we are heading into a 2008-style recession. And I just don't think that is going to be the case. So you want to think about a valuation opportunity. You want to look beneath the surface of the earnings reports of what we've been getting and will continue to get that show a buildup of loan loss provisions. I think there's a really interesting environment in financial, financials in particular, John. 